Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. This is Les, I'm an illustrator and graphic designer here at DMB and in this video I want to talk a little bit about typography. Now before we begin though, full disclaimer, I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator just to, you know, to demonstrate my points and principles about typography but this isn't a software-based technical video. I'm not gonna talk about what kerning is or how to do a baseline shift or what fonts to use per se. I'm gonna let you guys do your own experimenting with your own preferred software. The aim of this video is to give you some generic practical advice on how to approach type and fonts and letters in your design work. Basically how to develop a good eye and understanding of typographic principles in order to you know, take advantage of types and shapes. I had a long hard think and I came up with four, let's call them pointers, that I think we need to talk about when we talk about typography in graphic design. Let's jump in, shall we? In my previous video I walked you through my logo design process when we made this logo over here. But I did not talk about the typographic parts of it extensively. So I thought this time we will revisit this project so you can see how exactly I came up with the type work for it. And more importantly why I designed it the way I did. Okay, before we begin, point one is the legalities. Before you do anything at all, it is very important to know that working with fonts that has been, you know, which has been made by someone else is a complicated thing. You always have to know where your fonts came from in order to make sure that you have all the necessary legal rights in place in order to use a font in your project. Now there are many places where you can buy fonts online, although two good places to start your search are Google's font library as well as Adobe fonts. Both of these resources are free to use, assume, assuming you have an Adobe subscription. Obviously there are lots of other sites out there where you can look, but again make sure you know exactly what is permitted within the fonts license. Here you can see the fonts I the font I have used for this hoplite gymnasium ancient Greek inspired project is this font called Empiric Roman. It's from this website called dafont, dafont.com and this is it's a hundred percent free font. Okay, we got that out of the way, so let's get to the fun part. Fonts are not much different to icons, drawings or any other design elements really. At the end of the day, they are shapes, right? Now the problem is, it is very difficult to look at words without our brains automatically, you know, reading them. That would be necessary in order to see them as pure shapes, without concrete meaning. Now a good way to get around this problem is to rotate, reflect, play around with words and see if they still feel organic to your composition after all these adjustments and changes. Make sure they relate to all the other design elements that you are using in your project. Hence I have chosen this ancient Roman Empire inspired font for this Hoplite Gym project. Obviously an ancient Greece inspired font would have made more sense, but this was the next best thing I could find. Not to mention I have made it more Greek per se, which leads to my next point. What you consider the basic typographic set, as in the alphabet, is very much depending on where you are and what language are you reading in. Your alphabet could look like this, but it could also be this one, or this one, maybe this one. All of these sets come with their own different shapes, characteristics and rules, if you like. 
Now, obviously, as a designer, you can't really be expected to be native to all these different typesets, but just keep this just keep this diversifying mindset in your mind when you are working. Think outside the westernized English-speaking box, per se, so you can end up with visually more interesting projects. Here what I have done is took some Greek letters that sort of resemble the Latin alphabet that English speakers are used to and replaced them in order to create a brand new typographic composition. Now I recognize some might say this is quote-unquote wrong, appropriating all these diverse cultures and, you know, Englifying them. But I think if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, you realize that reading and typography is a constantly evolving, ever-growing concept and the rules are not really set in stone. Think what type once was and what could it be in the future. I think as long as your composition makes sense to your target audience, it should be considered as good design. Which leads us to the last point, which is legibility. Now, legibility is king, is the most important thing, right? It's basically the key point here. If your type work can be easily read, it's just not good design. This is true for any graphic design project in general. Your audience have to be able to immediately decode the message you're trying to communicate. This is especially important with type, as we all know how to read and we are used to read words very quick. Now, there is a fine but distinctive line between illustration and graphic design. Illustration is quite free and you are welcome to break some rules in the name of artistic freedom, but graphic design projects have to tick certain boxes in order to deem successful. Now, sometimes it is quite hard because you want to make a mark and create an impression, right? You have to contain yourself, you know, resist the urge to overcomplicate things and make sure your product per se is functional. A good example of this in my project is these Greek column-inspired elements. First, I wanted these columns to be very literal, you know, detailed Greek-style columns to make a real impression. But the more I have spent on them, the further I have pushed the design, it just ceased being type and started to overcomplicate things. So I had to go back and simplify it in the name of legibility. Now some of these are quite straightforward points that might sound mundane, but I truly believe if you keep these four pointers in mind, your design work will elevate to the higher level. Okay, so just to recap, have your legalities in place, think of letters as shapes, explore the word and get outside of the English alphabet, and keep everything legible. These are my four points. If you enjoy content like this, you will love our channel. We are all about illustration, graphic design, branding, as well as interior design, architecture, and general art tips. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button, and then you'll see what we are up to next. All right, see you next time. Bye.